Hey guys, the objective of this video is to find the imposed action Q uh, without the live load reduction, and we're going to be looking at with the live load reduction, so without first. This is a the typical floor plan we've been looking at. Now, we've always said that the live load is in the slab only. So in all the previous videos, we took the live load in the slab, we then transferred that live load from the slab into the beams, um, whereas when we looked at permanent actions, we had, say, for example, um, in some of the beams, we had the permanent action from the slab above and the permanent action of the, of the actual beam itself. All right, But you've seen now with live load, the live load only occurs in slabs. Okay, So to make it a little bit simpler for us, we can just take our typical floor and we can split up the amount of tributary area for each column. So I hope it's fairly obvious how I've done this. So if we look at this column, this amount of tributary area is going into that column over there. Uh, this amount would be split in there, so this area in there, this area in there would be for that one, that area in there for that one, and this would also similarly split that area for that, and this area for that one there. Okay, so if this was 9 by 9 meters over there, that means we've got 9 meters here, um, and would obviously have uh, 3.5 there and 3.5 there. Um, taking us to, sorry not 3.5, 4.5. So we'd have 4.5 and 4.5 and 9, okay? Now this is split in half, so this was 12, so that means that this height is 6 meters. Okay, so that is the tributary area for this column for live load. So the imposed action is going to be the imposed action on the slab for 9 different units. If we look back when we looked at permanent actions, so we have 10 lots of these, right? But what's going to happen is that the live loading in all the floors, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, is different to the live loading in the roof, okay? So we're going to do the first 9, so multiply the imposed action on the slab by 9, and then we need to add on the imposed action on the roof. So the total of that is 10, so we said there's 10 of these, but we just need to be aware that the imposed action on the roof is different to the imposed action on the slab. So we're going to be talking about that now. So the imposed action on the slab first. Now, uh, we found in the previous videos, we saw that the imposed action is 3 kPa. We took that from the standard. 